Hello everyone! This is your Pinoy Space Guy, Dr. Rohel Marie Sese, and welcome back to Space at Iba Pa. In this vlog series, we talk about everything you want to know, learn, and understand about astronomy, outer space, and the universe. Literally, the sky is not our limit. I hope you would join me in this journey of discovery as we learn and understand more about our planet Earth and the universe around us. For this episode of Space at Ibapa, let's talk about one of the most iconic and beneficial category of space objects, the satellite. We'll talk about the history of the satellite, how its use evolved over the decades from simple scientific experiments to remote sensing to telecommunications. And we will also talk about how communication satellites can bring the benefits of space technology to everyone here on Earth. So let's get ready to blast off as we start our journey to the stars. So what is a satellite? In simple terms, a satellite is a moon, planet, or machine that orbits another planet or a star. When stated this way, the moon is considered to be a satellite of the Earth, while the Earth in turn is a satellite of the Sun. These are what we call natural satellites. However, Modern usage of the word satellite refers to a machine that is launched into space and orbits the Earth or another celestial body. These man-made objects are the ones that immediately come to mind when we hear the word satellite. The first satellite was launched to space on October 4, 1957 by the former USSR, or what we now know as modern-day Russia. Called Sputnik 1, it marked the beginning of the space age and started mankind's journey to the stars. Sputnik 1 was about the size of a beach ball, weighed approximately 83 kilograms, and carried a simple electronic transmitter that emitted a beep every second as it orbits around the Earth. Despite its simplicity and short lifetime of only 21 days, Sputnik 1 paved the way for the development of more complicated and functional satellite that persists up to this day. The mission of a satellite can vary greatly depending on the need of the operator or the user. Some satellites are used for communications and broadcast television, some for weather monitoring and taking pictures of the Earth from space, and some are used to look at the stars and help us understand the mysteries of the universe. An average satellite carries a payload of instruments, sensor, and equipment that it needs in order to perform its mission. In addition to the payload, it has electronic systems to manage its power supply, receive and transmit signals, maintain its orientation and speed, and manage the overall health of the satellite. Satellites use radio waves to receive information from a ground station on Earth and to transmit it back either to the same station or to another receiver in a different location. Because of its complexity, satellites need to be well-designed to prevent breaking down and enable it to survive the harsh environment of outer space. Unlike cars or airplanes, once a satellite is launched, it is impossible to perform repairs in case something breaks down or gets worn out. This makes the satellite one of the most complicated and amazing pieces of machinery that mankind has ever made. When we say a satellite is in orbit, it means it has enough speed to maintain its altitude above the Earth's surface. The speed of a satellite depends on the push given to it by the rocket and pull of the Earth's gravity. As long as this is sufficiently large, around 3 to 8 kilometers per second, a satellite is not in danger of crashing back to Earth. There are three levels of satellite orbits that are generally used. The closest level to Earth is the low Earth orbit, also called LEO. The LEO, as its name suggests, is an orbit that is relatively close to the Earth's surface. This can be as low as 160 kilometers, all the way up to 1,000 kilometers above the sea surface. The proximity of LEO satellites to the Earth makes it very useful for satellite imaging, allowing us to take high-resolution pictures of virtually any part of the Earth's surface. 
A satellite in LEO takes about 90 minutes to make one full orbit around the Earth. The next level is the Medium Earth Orbit or MEO. This level is much farther out than LEO and is between 1,000 to 10,000 kilometers above sea level. This region is commonly used for navigation satellites like the Global Positioning System of the US, GLONASS of Russia, and Beidou of China due to its wider coverage compared to satellites in LEO. Thus, fewer satellites are needed to maintain a constant coverage to any part of the world. The highest level is the Geostationary Orbit or GEO. First postulated by the famous science fiction writer Arthur Clarke in the 1940s, the GEO is the most utilized and congested orbit. Located in parallel to the equator, at around 36,000 kilometers above sea level, satellites in GEO move in sync with the rotation of the Earth, taking one full day to make one complete orbit. This makes it appear as if the satellite is permanently fixed above a point in the equator. In addition, its high altitude enables it to cover as much as one-third of the Earth's surface. This makes the GEO a highly useful orbit for telecommunications satellite, since it can link any two locations within its coverage. Now let's focus on a specific kind of satellite, the communication satellite. Telecommunications was one of the earliest functions of satellites, starting way back in the 1960s. A communication satellite acts both as a receiver and transmitter that passes signals between two or more ground stations. These signals are used for various purposes, such as broadcast television, voice messages, and more importantly, data and information. Electronic transmissions uses radio frequencies, which needs to have a direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. However, because of the curvature of the Earth, this is limited at 5 to 35 kilometers, depending on the antenna height. In satellite communications, the problem of limited line of sight is solved by placing the satellite in orbit and have it act as a relay station. It can receive signals from a transmitter, say in Manila, amplify the signal, and then beam it back to another location, say in Davao. This enables the direct link between these two points, even if they are isolated and separated by large distances. To understand better how a satellite works, let's ask the help of our friends Pat, Drew, and Raul. Imagine these curved bleachers to represent the Earth. Pat is located on one side, while Drew is located on the other side. Pat wants to send information, represented by the ball, to Drew, but he can't do it directly because the Earth is blocking his way. So, Raul represents a satellite located at a certain distance from both Pat and Drew. Because Raul is high up in the atmosphere, he can easily see both Pat and Drew at the same time. So for Pat to be able to send the information to Drew, he first sends it to Raul. When Raul receives the information, he then sends the information back down to Drew. This basic one-way manner of satellite communications is how satellite broadcast television operates. But instead of sending it to only one receiver, it sends the information to multiple receivers. A step up from this is if Drew also wants to send information to back to Pat. In this case, Drew sends the information also to Raul, who then sends it back to Pat. This way, Pat and Drew can communicate and interact with one another even if they are separated by hundreds or even thousands of kilometers. The information being transmitted back and forth were usually voice messages, but nowadays, internet data is much more commonplace and prevalent, giving rise to more and more communication satellites with increasing bandwidth and capabilities. Modern satellites even have the capability to shape their beams to certain localities, making them more efficient. Combine this with their long lifetimes of 10 to 15 years, satellite communications has become an indispensable capability in a modern interconnected society. But you might be asking, are satellites still useful given we now have cell towers and ground infrastructure to connect us with our family and friends? With cell phones and iPads, do we still need communication satellites? One of the areas where communication satellites truly shine 
is in its ability to connect two points in the world, no matter how far or isolated they are. You can be in a remote island, or high up in the mountains, or out in the open sea, and yet be still able to access websites like Google and Facebook as if you were at home. For a mountainous archipelago like the Philippines, this is a tremendous benefit since even the remotest barangay or most isolated island can be connected with the rest of the country and the world. There is no need to wait for laying down long lines of fiber optic cables or building and maintaining cell sites. With satellites, it is also possible for students in remote areas to participate in online learning and for barangay health workers to be linked with doctors in major hospitals for consultations and diagnosis. Being connected can significantly improve the quality of life for our isolated and marginalized countrymen. Another benefit of satellites is its relative independence from atmospheric di disturbances such as typhoons. When a calamity strikes an area and all ground-based telecommunications infrastructures are wiped out, the only way survivors can communicate their condition is through satellites. This is what happened when Typhoon Yolanda struck the Visayas region in 2013. Due to the massive devastation brought about by the typhoon, all cell sites were destroyed, cutting their communication link. In the aftermath of Yolanda, satellite receivers called VSATs were deployed to create an ad hoc network to enable survivors to communicate with their relatives and relay their condition. It enabled responders to determine which areas are needed immediate rescue and relief, saving a lot of lives and greatly help in the rehabilitation effort. In regular times, satellite communications also provide a level of redundancy and can compensate for congestion for ground-based communication infrastructure. Lastly, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the increased demand for connectivity has led to the continued increase for satellite communications. With more and more people are trying to be connected, the ground-based communications infrastructure is becoming congested, leading to slow internet access, especially in far-flung areas. Using satellites can help decongest the network while maintaining an acceptable level of connectivity. This is a step towards internet democracy and eventually bridging the digital divide. So that ends our episode for today. If you have any questions about astronomy and space science, comment down below and we will try to answer them in future episodes. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Tune in for more exciting and educational episodes of Space Atibapa. This is your Pinoy Space Guy, Dr. Rohel Marie Sese, and always remember to keep reaching for the stars.